Today, we're talking about the whip shading technique. We'll explain everything in great detail, and I've chosen the toughest design I could find. It's a personal challenge for me because, in regular practice, we don't usually do shading this long. And that fancy macro lens with double zoom? Well, it doesn't make it any easier. If you're wondering why my videos always look so good, it's because my brother is a filmmaker. Here's how I managed to talk him into making videos with me. You can't pick your siblings, right? If you want to support us, please subscribe to our channel and give the video a thumbs up. I squeeze out a bit of Vaseline from the tube, then use it to secure the ink caps so they won't tip over during the tattooing process. Give the ink a good shake. I'm using Kurasumi Imperial Gray Wash, and I love it because it's super thin and flows really well. Plus, it's as dark as it gets. Deep black. To create different shades of gray, use four ink caps and fill them with varying amounts of ink to achieve a nice gradient. You can also use sterile water instead of shading solutions, as it works just as well and is more cost effective. Here's how it should look. I wrap the machine's grip with some grip to get a better hold, so it looks something like this. Fill one water cup with sterile water to clean the needle while tattooing. The reason for this is that when switching from a dark color to a light one, you can rinse the color out of the needle module this way. I've diluted green soap with sterile water at a 1 to 10 ratio and use it to wipe off excess ink. Keep a slightly moist paper towel handy in your free hand for quick cleanup without reaching far. During tattooing, tattoo ink is uh, injected into the skin using needles of different thicknesses and shapes ranging from 0.5 millimeters to 1.5 millimeters deep, penetrating through the top layer of skin, the epidermis, into the underlying dermis layer. This applies to all needles. On the left, you can see the whip shading technique in theory, and on the right, you can see how I put it into practice. Unlike the pendulum shading, we're shading in only one direction. For large shading areas, use a 17 Magnum Soft Edge by Cheyenne. These Magnums have rounded edges for smooth shading. The needles are arranged in two rows, with eight in the top row and nine in the bottom. The needle depth for a magnum should be no more than 2 mm out of the module, with an actual penetration depth of no more than 1.5 mm into the skin. Allowing the needle to protrude a bit from the module provides better sensitivity. I prefer setting the needle so that the module doesn't touch the skin. I use stencil stuff to apply the stencil to the skin, and then use a hair dryer for 1-2 to two minutes until it's dry. Apply Vaseline to the back of your hand for easy access during the tattooing process. This is especially important if the client has very dry skin since excess ink might not wipe off easily. Now start with the darkest part of the tattoo and dip your needle into the darkest gray ink. Some artists push the needle away when shading, but I prefer pulling the needle towards me for smoother shading. There are various shading techniques, but in this video, I'm focusing on one. Work on the large areas and don't try to reach the edges with the magnum. You can touch up the edges later with a thinner needle. On real skin, the ink gets absorbed after a few strokes. On silicone skin, you can see the needle structure more clearly. This technique is gentle on the skin, and allows for multiple passes over the same area. Make sure to use enough ink. You can work with the ink on the skin, moving it back and forth. It's better to dip into the ink more often rather than too little, as insufficient ink can make the work harder. Here, I'm working with 8 volts. Beginners can start with lower voltages, such as 7 volts. The sound of the machine is also important as it indicates the right depth and hand movement speed. 
By first dipping my needle into the darkest ink cap, and then into a slightly lighter one, I get a tone in between. This way, I can mix a different shade directly in the needle module, which is why four ink caps are sufficient for me. Patience is required for whip shading. In my early tattooing days, I used to put too much pressure on myself. Shading requires taking your time and working carefully. It's not just about technique, but also the right mindset. When I started tattooing, my biggest problem was often getting stressed. It's important to be confident and take the time needed for a tattoo. Tattoos are forever and are art, deserving proper respect. Regardless of how long it takes, art has its value without justification. Whatever you do, always give your best, and it will have the value it deserves. Short fun fact, this is me starting tattooing at the age of 12 on a pumpkin. Initially, I focus on pulling the machine in one direction to create needle structures. These can be blended later with a cross-shading technique. The movements are always the same. The only difference is the ink in the module. I often use this technique for light shading because it minimizes the risk of dark, unwanted spots. Since the needle is pulled, not pushed, it naturally goes smoother into the skin. Now, I make a pass where I pull the needle in a different direction to blend the needle structure. Essentially, it's the same technique, just in a different direction. I'm showing this pass a bit faster, but remember that it's the same motion every time. I'll link all the products I use in the video description. Get yourself a practice skin and try out the shading technique first. I always show you my way of doing it, but maybe there's a better way that suits you and makes you feel more comfortable. So, stay open to alternatives. When it comes to light shading, it's crucial to be super careful and work meticulously. Otherwise, you might end up with an unintended dark spot. If even the lightest shade still seems too dark, I can simply dip my needle briefly into the water cup to get an even lighter tone. For blending the shading, I use a 7 round liner with 6 needles arranged in a circle and one in the center. I set this needle to protrude about 4 millimeters from the module. I deliberately didn't extend the shading with the magnum all the way to the edges, as it can be challenging for beginners to work precisely at the edges. This skill develops with time and practice. Back when I started tattooing, I wished for videos like these, which I'm now trying to create for you. Feel free to let me know in the comments if you have any lingering questions, and I'll be happy to answer them. Normally, I'd shade with the magnum up to the corner, but for beginners, I'm doing it differently now to demonstrate that you can still achieve a clean result. Always keep in mind that making a mistake isn't the worst thing. It's about gaining enough knowledge to know how to handle those errors. I've noticed in the comments that we have a very international audience. I'm curious, where are you all from? I'm from Austria and currently living in Vienna. After blending everything nicely, I switch back to the magnum to work on specific areas. The process remains the same. After waiting for a while, the swelling usually subsides, allowing you to see areas that need some touch-up. 
That's about it. It's not easy to explain, but I did my best, and if there are any mistakes, please be forgiving. We appreciate your support. Good luck on your journey, practice diligently, and see you in the next video.